Pope John Paul charmed millions of Americans, but his relationship with the United States was anything but simple. During his U.S. visits, he often came face to face with dissent, sometimes from non-Catholics, sometimes from inside the church itself. On his first American tour, a nun made a startling public plea for the ordination of women. I urge you, Your Holiness, to be open to and to respond to the voices coming from the women of this country who are desirous of serving in and through the church as fully participating members. And he then said to her, because he'd been warned that Mary Teresa Kane was going to come out with this statement, he lectured her and reminded her that the Blessed Virgin Mary was not a member of the hierarchy. In 1987 in San Francisco, gay rights advocates and AIDS activists met the Pope with demonstrations. Gay rights now! They criticized the church's stand against homosexual behavior and warned that the church might be less than compassionate towards people with AIDS. At the time, many people feared that they could put their lives at risk by even touching someone with AIDS. With one gesture, Pope John Paul II addressed both fears. There was this little boy who uh, was in the church. He had caught AIDS through a uh, transfusion. The Pope embraced him. It was a sign also to some of the critics. It doesn't matter how you got this disease, we still want to be compassionate with you. It was difficult for a lot of people to sort of accept that compassion. He did it through this little boy. It was just one way he touched lives in the U.S a country he visited again and again. As correspondent Bob McNamara remembers. He was just a man, but like magic. Everywhere Pope John Paul II traveled in this country, in the streets, in the stadiums, crowds were in the hundreds of thousands. In five American visits over two decades, Pope John Paul saw 20 cities and four presidents. Most people would catch just a fleeting glimpse of the man, but many would be forever touched. I never get this close to the Pope. He's a tremendous personality and he has that magnetism that you just don't find uh, anywhere else. But for all of the clamor, all of the massive crowds, some of the most lasting memories of John Paul II were made in the smallest of places tiny St. Patrick's Catholic Church, deep in the heart of Iowa. He came in the church and, you know, he kind of gave me a hug and asked me if I was Irish. Just... <laughs> What'd you tell him? I uh, told him I didn't know. <laughs> Bob Mulvihill Jr. was nine, an altar boy, the day Pope John Paul came to St. Patrick's in 1979 for a prayer service. As the Pope walked down the aisle, Jennifer Mulvihill touched his hand. It's a keychain, and it's pure gold. It is. <laughs> and a gift from the Pope. It has a Pope on it. She still treasures. Really exciting? Mm-hmm. It was ne nice to meet him. He was so normal, you know, for being so important that um, it made me proud now to be Catholic and, and to be part of the, the church and part of the Irish settlement. And, and that's something that I'll never that'll never be taken away from me is that memory and the pride of being there. He spent only an hour at this little country church, but the Pope seemed almost reluctant to leave. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I don't think I've ever been so excited or, um, it's just been a wonderful time. It was a validating moment because he came here and he said, you're a rural community, you are stewards of the land, you, you, you do what you do because you love what you do. Very nice and you're doing a good job. But the small family farm that was the Mulva Hills life then would be lost, like thousands of others, to the farm financial crisis of the 1980s. And yet the faith they practiced the day the Pope visited is the same. I don't know that we've lived our lives any different because of it, but I think we certainly appreciate the, how special it was. From his first visit to this country to the fragile figure he was on his last trip here, all the pageantry and choreography of each papal event could never camouflage the fact that the Roman Catholic Church's holiest man was most of all a humble man.